Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation. This is Theater Talk. I'm Susan Haskins. Put on a happy face tomorrow, and the theme to The Price is Right. These are just a few of the hits written by our guest this week on Theater Talk. He's been a major force in the musical theater for over five decades, and we're so pleased to have him here. To introduce him, my co-host, Michael Riedel of the New York Post. I have to say that Charles Strauss is one of my favorite Broadway composers. I grew up listening to all of his shows, Bye Bye Birdie and Applause, It's a Bird, It's a Plane, It's Superman, Annie, so many more. I don't think there's ever a time when there's not a Charles Strauss show on my CD turntable in my house. He has come out with a memoir about his life on Broadway called Put on a Happy Face, a Broadway memoir, and I'm very happy that it has brought Charles Strauss to our show today. Welcome. Thank you. Michael. And thank you for uh, sitting at the at the piano for us. Where else? So <laughs> whenever the spirit moves moves you, you can just tickle the ivories. Yeah. So Charles, let's start at the uh, beginning of your career. You had the great fortune to study with uh, Nadia Boulanger in Paris, yes. one of the great piano teachers of all time. Well, a composition teacher, actually. How did how did that come about? You were a young kid from New York, and you wind up in Paris with this famous teacher. Well, I, I studied uh, before that. It wasn't the, the beginning of my career, but. Uh, among the teachers I had, uh, Aaron Copeland. I worked with uh, Aaron for three years, wow. and uh, he got me a scholarship to work with uh, Nadia, uh, or Madame Boulanger, and uh, so I went to Paris for a year. Were you intimidated by her? Was she a sort of was she a tough taskmaster in composition? Uh, she was. Um, uh, how do you explain her? Uh, she was a, uh, a a musical psychiatrist. She had an uncanny ability when when you were playing something to somehow say that's you. This other is uh, Stravinsky or, or or somebody else you're trying to copy, but this is you. And uh, and like a good psychiatrist, you left a feeling with a certain confidence about uh, uh, even trivial things you'd written. That she was listening uh, to uh, to the real person, and uh, I've heard this from other composers too. And uh, she told me I had a talent for light music. That was uh, that was the beginning of. Well, it was something I was I was quite ashamed of. I used to do things as jokes in in uh, in music school. I went to a very impressive music school, the Eastman School in the Rochester, Eastman right? School yeah. of music. But you know, I played in cafes and jazz and all. And but in it, your mind, what did you aspire to when you were a kid? I I, uh, I think in my mind I aspired uh, to be a serious. I mean, I think of myself as a serious composer, even though I'm known for a lot of light pieces. But uh, uh, I aspired to uh, be Lenny Bernstein and, and Aaron. Uh, he, he was a great hero to me, and I got to know Lenny uh, during my life. And uh, uh, those were where my aspirations led. I orchestrated. I worked as an orchestrator in the movies, that kind of thing. And then, Do you have a, anything at your fingertips of a light piece you wrote when you were young that, uh, you know, you were, you were full around uh, or playing around? I don't know whether I could get through it, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you, you, you give uh, us a little uh, bit. Uh, uh, yeah, Early the, Charles Strauss. Uh, 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 I can play a, a little bit of his room. Uh, That's right. I can't Did play. I detect a little bit of the opening of possibilities in the very beginning? That the the, the, the little part you're playing there. That uh, not yes. You know, I mean, <laughs> in the sense, well, it's all tone. It's tonal music. I hit some of the same keys, but I hadn't expected to play that naturally. But I wrote that when I uh, when I first started music school. Uh, after that, 
uh, because I started to write uh, music when I went to music school that was very Hindemith and Bartok and all, and, and my and my parents used to sit there just as you did, uh, Rose, and go. <laughs> and so uh, um, the Boulanger, she picked that up on you, and she said you. She could... uh, she picked it up, but in in in, in uh, grander pieces that I was writing, I was working on, you know, a movement of a symphonic work. I was working on a two piano sonata, all of that kind of thing. And she, picked, but she also asked me to. Uh, she said, uh, when you were a little child, what did you do? And I said, well, I, when did you start? And I said, uh, well, I, I wrote little ditties, which amused my, uh, m when my brother went into the Navy and he came in on shore leave once, I wrote uh, a song called Welcome Home, Able-Bodied Seaman Strauss. And uh, <laughs> Can you play this that was, one? <laughs> and she said, she said, play it for me. And I said, oh, I couldn't. Uh, that I'm really, you know, play it. So I did that, and then she said, what else? And uh, I had uh, written a song called Moon Over 83rd Street uh, with shafts right below. It would have no bearing on her life, but she said, play it. So I played it, and, and, uh, and then she, she started to absorb my personality, which I didn't absorb. You know, I was... I was ashamed of every way I turned, the way I looked, the way I ate, the way I wrote music and all that. And she was very instrumental in straightening me out uh, in, in, in saying, uh, this it reflects your personality in, in a way. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Did you write lyrics then too? Were you writing the words? Oh, uh, well, this is really child stuff, yes. But I have written lyrics. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, and <laughs> as you pointed out, I wrote a book which was a big surprise to me. And uh, I had a show in New York called Mayor, uh, which uh, I wrote uh, the lyrics as well as the music. A man by the name of Jerry Kravitz, a close friend of mine who just passed away, uh, produced it. Didn't Warren Light write Mayor? Brian, yes. Uh, well, he wrote the, wrote the, book, uh, the, yes, the, the, the talking material. Right, right. Between, and there's yeah, right, right. Whatever. Right. Do you have a little uh, Moon Over 83rd Street? Is that still uh, up? Moon Over 83rd Moon Over 83rd Street With shrafts right below <laughs> moon over 83rd street my heart's all aglow you janet in the lamplight i hear something call moon over 83rd street i'm yours body and soul that's all I remember. That's I wish romantic. I was That's I was in love with a girl by the name of Janet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a beautiful song, though, I have to say. You hey. should have <laughs> stuck with the lyric writing, too. Those aren't bad lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> so your first um, big hit on Broadway. Um, Bye Bye Birdie. Bye Bye Birdie, right. Which you wrote with... Um, Lee Adams. Lee Adams. And, and Mike wonderful, Stewart. Wonderful yeah. lyricist. And Mike Stewart, who's a terrific book writer. And lyricist. Yeah. How, how did that... Did that come out of your writing sort of sketch material in clubs in the village and... It did, because uh, a lot of the sketch material that Lee and I and Mike and I wrote went into a review called the Shoestring Review. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, I was playing rehearsal piano uh, for a show called Saratoga with mm -hmm. Carol Lawrence and Howard Keel, and I was in the pit. And the stage manager of that show had seen Shoestring Review and every, by the way, everyone used to call me Buddy. The, the, the Charles came later in life through my marriage and all and that. And with all I the mean, Tony Awards and the yeah, uh, but, success. Uh, 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 yeah, my wife <laughs> insisted that, hey, come on, you're a Charles now. And she made me <laughs> change, but that's a whole other program. And uh, uh, the stage manager of Saratoga was a man by the name of Padula. And I remember he, I remember vividly, he, he leaned over the, the pit of the theater where I was slaving away and said, buddy, uh, would you be interested in doing a musical? I, would, I was so interested in doing a musical because a lot of my friends, notably Sheldon Harnish and Jerry Bach, had gotten musicals on. And I'm kind of slaving away playing, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten from the tango section, go. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, so I was desperate to, and uh, he took me to lunch, and he told me he had this idea about uh, it was an original musical, Bye Bye Birdie, and it's not based on I a book. I have been or... very uh, fortunate, and it has been unique, that in my career, 
uh, if you count Superman and Annie, mm -hmm. uh, and by by Bertie, I've written all. I've been the composer of all original musicals. Most adaptations are uh, uh, even Nick and Nora. Right, 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 right. Uh, was uh, it was an original. Uh, it was not taken from any specific uh, movie. The characters. Uh, now, when you wrote, uh, when you were writing Bye Bye Birdie, what was the, um, is when you, Julie Stein used to like to say, you know, he knew when he'd hit, written a hit song. Did you know that Put On A Happy Face from that show was, no. was the hit song? No. no. There was, was a song you wrote that you thought was going to be the hit that wasn't? Uh, well, as a matter of fact, that was the song that I uh, wanted to take out of the show. <laughs> Put On but, A Happy Face? Yeah. Okay. I, I, in fact, it was one of the few arguments we had. It was a lot of fun writing Birdie, particularly. but. Uh, uh, Goward uh, staged a big number in a television studio, something like the one we're in now, where Van Dyke, who was a newcomer, mm -hmm. was going to have this big number, and he was setting up the lights for the appearance of Birdie, and so he would say, yellow, green, and, and, and uh, put on a happy face because there was a problem in the show. And he, he staged a lavish number, and Dick was his usual rubbery, wonderful self, and uh, it failed. Uh, that simply, and the applause at the end of the show was very mild for uh, Dick. He he wasn't really making it, and so I said, "Let's get a new number." And it was Marge Champions who said, "Wait a second, I know what we can do with this number." And she had the idea to sing it to Sue to two sad girls at the uh, station when oh. Bertie was leaving. And I was very ashamed of that because the fir virtually the first number was going to be a tap dance with two little girls. And I, you know, I was kind of out of music school and I thought, <laughs> gee, I don't want this. But anyway, Marge is the one who insisted. And, uh, That's a pretty inspired choice. Yeah. Can yeah. We have a little it was a great choice. And of course, as everybody, many people know, Bye Bye Birdie's based on the Elvis going in the army. Yeah. And, uh, and so a lot of the rest of the score is, is your parody of 50s rock music, yeah. uh, music that yeah. put on a happy face as a standard. And, and, and yeah. the show came into being after he was released from the yeah. army. That's how tough it was to get money even then. <laughs> and that show cost. I believe it was $185,000. The whole thing to produce. Yeah. <laughs> That's not even the running cost of a two-character play I these know. days. I know. Can we have a little put on a happy face? Oh, sh... <laughs> <laughs> Gray skies are gonna clear up, put on a happy face. Brush off the clouds and cheer up, put on a happy face. Take off that gloomy mask of tragedy, it's not your style. You look so good that you'll be glad you decided to smile. Shall I go on, please? You got a pleasant outlook. Stick out that noble chin. Wipe off that full of doubt look. Slap on a happy grin. And spread sunshine all over the place. Just put on a Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. We got to take a minute to talk about Lee Adams, who oh. wrote uh, that wonderful lyric and so many great lyrics with you. How did you meet meet Lee, and, and how did you guys work work together? When same well, wavelength there. We've known each other. He's my best friend. You know, not many people you can say that about, but he's the man that I know. I think we all have somebody like that in our lives. But Susan. If, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we met actually through a, a, f a friend, a mutual friend, who went to Ohio State with Lee. Mm -hmm. Lee was an um, uh, English major, then later went to um, journalism school at, uh, uh, at Columbia. Mm -hmm. And uh, we simply hit it off. Uh, I was, I was a, uh, a working piano player, so to speak, and I had written some stuff, but uh, we, we just kind of liked each other. But I, I'm playing around in saloons and strip clubs and all that kind really? of thing. Really? played in strip clubs? Oh, yeah. I uh, 
I, I, I've had a, uh, when I look back, <laughs> because I wrote it in a book, I never kept a diary or anything. Mm -hmm. See, but uh, as I went to page 12 or something, I said, you know, I was playing in a strip so club. So the strip clubs are here and put on a happy face your, your biography. Uh, it's, uh, yes, I put everything in. Good. Uh, Lauren Bacall said to me, I, I just happened to speak to her yesterday. Mm -hmm. She said, did you write about the time you made a pass at me? <laughs> And uh, yes, I, did you, I, said, uh, I, I asked my wife. Uh, <laughs> I do remember being I, not that you have to be drunk, but I said to I said to Betty, I'm quoting myself. I said, "What straight man sitting on a sofa with Lauren McCall wouldn't make a pass at her?" So uh, how did she I, respond? Uh, I, would, uh, I don't know. With disgust, I think. <laughs> but, but you wrote her. You wrote her some good stuff with uh, in applause, though. Uh, it was it was great fun. She's a, a wonderful woman. I know you know her well. And yeah. uh, uh, Betty, as everybody calls her, is the hardest working, most dedicated uh, actor I've ever been. She's tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's nails, but uh, she yeah. is terrific. Would you give us a little of the theme song from Applause? Again, a lyric by uh, Lee Adams, by who Lee we were just Adams. talking about. We'll go back yeah. to him. Yeah. I just play part of it. It's, it's fine. It's, it's fine. Yeah. It's. Yeah. Uh, what? What? Please. What is it that we're living for? Applause, applause. Nothing I know brings on the glow like sweet applause. You're thinking you're through, that nobody cares when suddenly. Somehow you're in charge again, and it's a ball. Trump is all sing, life seems to swing, and you're the king of it all. Cause you've had a taste of the sound that says love. Sing it better than Betty. Yeah. Betty, Betty, well, Betty, 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 to me, very supportive of me, and uh, I was to him, and uh, we, we're we're very different personalities. And uh, when he got married, not only was I jealous, but it changed my work schedule totally. He suddenly <laughs> bought a place in Connecticut, and uh, we'd be working. And you know, I can go on all the time. And uh, he would say, you know, if we stop now, I can catch the 403. Oh. And that used to get me mad. And uh, I would say, as much as anything else, that put us on different paths. But mm. we, we still love one another. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. uh, and and if, if the right thing happened, as I mentioned before, we have a show called Marty, which is in, that, in the wheel of Broadway. Oh and uh, will be done, I hope, next year. And uh, I think he would, uh, he's not retired, he's, uh, he's soured on the business. He, he, it's a tough uh, business. Uh, he doesn't like many of the shows that are happening and he doesn't want to come into town. He's a great reader mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. that's and, it. Uh, well, really, a wonderful lyricist too. You Terrific. And I, you and I spoke um, few months ago about um, possibility of a revival of a show of yours I really love, uh, Golden Boy, based on the Clifford Odets play, yeah. uh, which you wrote for Sammy Davis Jr. That's right. Uh, and I remember you telling me that you know writing and working with Sammy Davis Jr. was was a challenge. Yeah. Wasn't he flying you to Las Vegas or something to write the well, show? Well, he didn't fly us, but we, <laughs> we flew out. He uh, uh, Again, it's, uh, m many of the incidents are 
uh, because it was a very interesting time in my life. Uh, I had just been married, uh, and Sammy, we had our first apartment that was more than two rooms, <laughs> and uh, Sammy traveled with an entourage of seven people. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, my wife, Barbara Simon, mm -hmm. she, uh, she used to think that was going to be the marriage. There were these seven people who were always coming in there and... And, uh, uh, and then Sammy. <laughs> yeah, and his father was around too all the time. Oh, uh, so uh, it was a very tight relationship, a very uncomfortable as well as comfortable relationship. We got to be great friends when we went down to Selma to march for uh, civil rights, which we did. And uh, in that uh, trip, uh, I took a plane and a charter, uh, I took a uh, chartered air flight. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, with, uh, it seated three per people, including the pilot and Sammy and me. And I was at the time claustrophobic, I mean seriously claustrophobic. And I said, if there's anything I've done for the civil rights movement, this is it. This is bravery beyond, I mean, although we had to face some guns and all of that kind of thing. And during that trip, uh, we shared a, a bottle of brandy, I remember that. <laughs> and for the first time, Sammy opened up to me and I to him, and I, I grew to like him very much. But before that, uh, uh, he didn't, uh, I, I felt, relate to me. I mean, we would go out to uh, uh, Las Vegas to play him a song, uh, and uh, he would say, I'll meet you guys at, uh, at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. I say, okay, <laughs> Lee Lee's a, a very early to go bed person. <laughs> yeah. but, well, we would get there at two, and then he would show up at four. Oh, I hate when that happens. Oh, well, <laughs> then you, you would not like Sam. No, I, yeah. I can sense it now. I <laughs> so he was uh, a star in his own mind as well as in reality. Well, in reality, he was the greatest. Yes, star. he was huge. He was yeah. huge, yeah. And, but he would come that late with a whole flock of the girls from the cars <laughs> and waiters, and I'd play him a song that w was, you know, we worked very hard on the show. And he says, yeah, I like that. And then he would sing it, and he said, oh, yeah, I'd like And he would sing it back all wrong. But all the chorus girls would go, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. And before you know it, I'm involved. We were all involved in a party. And, your, wife, and your wife must have loved that. Yeah. Well, she wasn't with us all the time oh, in Las Vegas. Uh, yeah. so. Can you give us a, a song you would have played Sammy out there in Vegas? That oh, I remember one love. very well, because it's it's my favorite song. and, and it was Your favorite uh, song of all time that you've written? Well, I certainly, at, at that time, it was. Uh, it was uh, after Birdie. It was a song that uh, Lee and I tried to show deeper sentiments, and I used more expansive harmonies and that kind of thing. It's I wanna be with you. I'll get it in a better key. I wanna be with you. I wanna After all the nights of wanting you, lying there, loving you, hating you, tonight I'm touching you, tasting you, world you're gonna see, we'll make out somehow, here's my girl and me, long cords, they can't hurt us now. I love that song. It's one of I the most too. beautiful ballads. And uh, I remember that in particular, playing that for Sammy with the, with the waiters all, you know, and people spoke, talking and all that. Always says, yeah, I want to be with you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, I mean, I'm a jazz guy, so I understood, but I really would have appreciated if he had learned the music first. Right. And, uh, the, and suddenly everyone's saying, oh, that's great. I want to be with you. But I saw that show, and he really got it together. That oh, he, oh, oh, he sings it beautifully yeah. on the album. Yeah, yeah he did. And, uh, you know, I, I poke a little unfairly at But it was a book that, uh, that stemmed from my memory. And uh, uh, I think were Sammy alive, he would have agree with it. I mean, our trip to Selma was one of the most hysterical and frightening uh, things, and, you know, we got to know each other. We're out of time, but uh, we'll just stick around and we'll just make this a, a, a two-part show. I'd be flattered. Oh, great, great. So you've seen the first part of Charles Strauss's uh, uh, life from his book, Put on a Happy Face, a Broadway memoir. Uh, and just stick around next week because we're going to get the, uh, the, the, the second part of his career.
Would you play us out with my favorite song from Golden Boy, uh, Stick Around? Indeed, because we've asked oh, you to stick uh, around. Uh, the, the Stick around, things are gonna happen. Stick around, stick around and see. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. Mm -hmm.